Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video I am bringing you guys my wide receiver sleeper list for 2020. Now this list will get updated as the offseason goes along and as we get closer to the season because we'll get better reads on these guys and their ADPs will move. So some guy that is a sleeper now, his ADP may skyrocket into where he's just a normal pick. So before we get into the video, I'd like to ask you guys, could please go down below and click that subscribe button. And after this video, please check out Sleeper Running Backs, a video that went out the day before yesterday is when the video came out. It was a great video as well, just like this one. So we're going to be diving into the my sleeper wide receivers for fantasy football in 2020. Let's get right into it. So the first guy here is Marvin Jones of the Detroit Lions. Now, last season finished wide receiver 28 2019, but only in 13 games. He missed three games, 14.9 PPR points per game, 139.9 total PPR points, 62 receptions on 92 targets, nine total tutties with 779 yards, which is 36th amongst wide receivers, and those nine touchdowns are third amongst wide receivers. So he finished upper echelon in the touchdown count category only playing 13 games now I don't think it's, it's pretty hard to, to predict how many wide receiver touchdowns a guy's going to score every single week when they're a wide receiver so I wouldn't necessarily say oh he's going to score 12 now because he missed three games no he'll probably end up being around the same nine or ten but that's still some great value for fantasy football and he did it with and without myth Mr. Matthew Stafford I know people are going to be the truth they're saying oh Matthew Stafford might get hurt sure he might get hurt but I think he's at least good for like 10 games this season his back is kind of messed up but to look real quick into his stats with or without Matthew Stafford kind of tell a very telling tale that he's still talented with or without Mr. Stafford but he's more talented with Stafford so in split on this uh, graphic you're seeing right now is with Matthew Stafford and out of split is without Matthew Stafford in 2019 so with Matt Stafford he played eight games without five games so in the games with Matthew Stafford 16.49 PPR points per game versus 12.4 with David Blau 5.25 receptions versus four with David Blau. 0.75 receiving touchdowns versus 0.6. 7.12 targets versus seven. And 66.88 receiving yards versus 48. So clearly, 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 when you bring in Mr. Stafford, he's better. But he's not that much better. So I am still optimistic that if Stafford doesn't end up playing all those many games, that Marvin Jones will still be a talented guy. Now, to me, Galladay is much better than him, but you're going to be seeing some similar fantasy production some weeks where they both end up going off, or Marvin Jones even ends up scoring more points than him because they are just two very talented guys that Stafford looks to. It's not like he sees Kenny Galladay as so much better than Marvin Jones, even though Galladay typically catches more balls every game than him, but I still think that Marvin Jones is a fantastic selection in fantasy football in 2020 and is going to be a guy that I'm looking for in a lot of drafts later on the back end of the draft. So the next guy to talk about here is Tyler yeah, Boyd of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now last season he finished wide receiver number 18, uh, 13.9 PPR points per game, 222.9 PPR points in 16 games, 90 receptions, 147 targets, 1,046 yards, 26 amongst wide receivers, and five total tutties, 34th amongst wide receivers, two years in a row with back-to-back Michael Jordan, 96-97, 1,000-plus yard seasons. This guy is an absolute fucking monster. Now, you may be worried, oh, titty boy T. Higgins is there. Oh, this, that, all that. Now it's Joe Burrow. A.J. Green's coming back. Who gives a fuck? Because he played just as good with A.J. Green or without him. He was hot with Mr. Ryan Finley. He was hot with Andy Dalton. He's going to be hot regardless of who the quarterback is. Obviously, it's Joe Burrow, but it does not matter, and he will be just fine without A.J. Green. So I got some stats for you guys right here. This is with A.J. AJ Green and without him. So the in split is with the games that AJ Green played and the out of split is where AJ Green didn't play this from 2018 and 2019 because obviously in 2019 he AJ Green just did not play a single game because his pussy hurts and he just magically gets hurt every single year. So I wouldn't even count on AJ Green really being there for a long time if I'm being completely honest with you. Nine total games with AJ Green, 21 without, 17.4 points per game without him or with AJ Green in the game, 13.4. 85 without A.J. Green. 6.11 receptions with A.J. Green in the game. 5.29 without A.J. Green. 0.56 versus 0.33. 8.22 uh, receiving targets versus 8.62. 79.67 receiving yards versus 64.57. So tell me, tell me down below in the comments why you're fucking worried about AJ Green being there or him not being there. The guy balls out with or without him. And some of these games are not even with Andy Dalton. And Andy Dalton might be slightly better than Joe Burrow, but 
role for obviously as a rookie, but then uh, Burrow should easily exceed him. But I think Tyler Boyd and Joe Burrow are going to have a great, great connection this season. I love Tyler Boyd. I think that his ADP right now is far too low, and it's going to stay low because no one's going to believe in him. There's too many guys around him, they say. But don't be one of those guys. Draft Tyler Boyd in your fantasy football drafts. I love him super late, like I said. So the next guy here is Randall Cobb of the Houston Texans. Now, he got traded there this season. He comes to – he already didn't get traded. He got signed from the Dallas Cowboys to Houston. So he was wide receiver 20 or 42 last season in Dallas, 10.3 PPR points per game, 154.9 PPR points, 15 games, 55 receptions, 83 targets, 828 yards, 33rd amongst wide receivers, and three total tutties, 51st amongst wide receivers. Now, those stats – don't fucking matter. You take the stats, you throw them out the window. It's like when the AFC North is playing against each other. You take the rule book or the stats, you throw them out the window because the records do not matter in those games. Randall Cobb is going to have an impact on this team. The Houston Texans do not even have a number one guy. Is it Will Fuller? Is it Randall Cobb? Is it Kenny Stills? Who knows? So why not just draft Randall Cobb, the guy who's most likely not going to end up dying during the season like Mr. Stills typically does, or like Will Fuller just loves getting hurt every single year? So does David Johnson. So, I mean, Randall Cobb's probably the most talented guy and the most safe guy on that offense, and he's going undrafted in some leagues. That is fucking blasphemy. Randall Cobb is going to still be talented. He is kind of uh, kind of one of those guys where, you, you know, you shake the dice, you throw it on the screen, you say, fuck it, let me just draft this guy, and let's hope we get lucky here, but I think that Randall Cobb's gonna be a very safe pick, obviously they have tons of vacated targets, because Mr. DeAndre Hopkins, the only guy that Mr. Uh, Mr. Deshaun Watson threw the ball to, is now just gone, so Randall Cobb is going to get the opportunity to do it, and he has proved, being in the league for a very long time, that he's a talented wide receiver, even getting up there in age, so I think that Randall Cobb has a very safe season, and he's a guy that not very many fantasy football analysts, experts, whatever you want to call us, are looking at. So, a next guy to talk about here is Mr. Jalen Rieger of the Philadelphia Eagles, formerly of TCU University. So, 2019 college stats, 12 games, 43 receptions, 93 targets, 611 receiving yards, 5 total tutties, 23.50 target share, and 46.20% catch rate. So, the catch rate's not very good, but his quarterback was a fucking bum. So, he goes from being in a shitty system as the number one wide receiver to being in a better system, obviously, in the NFL with a pretty good system. The Eagles don't really have a one, number one wide receiver. They have Alshon Jeffrey, but he'll end up fucking finding his way into that injury tent. Um, now it's just going to be it's gonna be the Jalen Rieger show, to be honest with you, and Zach Ertz and Dallas Godert. I mean, maybe at the beginning of the season when Alshon Jeffrey's healthy, he doesn't do as good, but he's going to be the number one, number two target on the team. This guy has shown immense talent on TCU. He has shown that he can be that guy for him. They drafted him highly. They went out there. They selected him. They want Jalen Rieger, and that is exactly what they are going to get. He is going to be a target monster. A target monster on the Philadelphia Eagles. They legitimately don't have anyone besides Mr. Alshon Jeffrey, and they just really don't have anyone besides Alshon Ertz and Goder, like I said. So I think that he's going to be a very, very safe pick, and he's going to be a guy that's going to be tearing it up, even as a rookie, when it's going to be a little bit harder for these guys to learn the playbook. So he might not get it going until later in the season, maybe week five. But with that said, you drafted him super late in like the 13th round, so you don't give a fuck if he produces at the beginning. You hold on to him, and you hope that he has this production that I think he is going to get on the Philadelphia Eagles. So the next guy here is Scary Terry McLaurin of the Washington Redskins. Now, he is a sophomore wide receiver in the NFL. Last season, finished wide receiver 29, 13.7 PPR points per game, uh, 191.9 PPR total points, 14 games, 58 receptions, 93 targets, 919 yards on 27th amongst wide receivers, 7 total tutties, 13th amongst wide receivers. So this guy was tearing it up on the Redskins, all right? Dwayne Haskins has to get better. He just has to. Mr. Terry McLaurin and Dwayne Haskins played on the same fucking college team at the same time, and Dwayne Haskins just completely forgot. He went blind. He was like, how do I... He, he turned into Stevie Wonder out there. He's like, how do I throw the ball to the fucking guy I've been throwing it to for the last three years? And he just doesn't figure out how to do it, but now he does. He should be able to by now. Towards the end of the season, it was getting better. Terry McLaurin is a freak athlete. He is very talented. He's a guy that's going to go up and get you that ball, go and get you those fancy points. He's going to have over 100 targets this year, probably 70 receptions. This guy's going to tear it up, and he is going in 
farther back than he should be going back, so I'm going to consider him a sleeper. I think that he tears it up. He's probably the best sophomore wide receiver besides DK Metcalf. I might even think that Terry McLaurin might be better than him. I just love the talent, and Washington has to be on the up. That old line has to somehow be better because they were just letting Mr. Dwayne Haskins get pounded into the goddamn ground last season. So the next guy here is Henry Ruggs, and he is also the final guy of the video. So if you guys have enjoyed this video thus far, please click that subscribe button down below. So Henry Ruggs, wide receiver of the Las Vegas Raiders. So obviously he gets drafted in the first round. This guy was the first wide receiver off the board. So Mr. John Gruden, he loves this man, man. And uh, Mike Mayock as well. So Henry Ruggs fucking speedster out of Alabama. This guy is like Lightning McQueen on the football field. Hussein Bolt, Tyreek Hill-esque kind of guy. 2019 college, college stats, 12 games, 40 receptions, 53 targets, 746 receiving yards, 7 touchdowns, 13.10% target share, 75.50% catch rate. So he's not going to be a guy that's getting a shit ton of catches. You just have to understand that. He's the big play guy. He's the guy where Derek Carr is getting... They're running at Derek Carr. For some reason, they let Henry Ruggs go one-on-one -on -one with the corner, and Ruggs just burns that guy, and he just catches a touchdown. He's that kind of a guy. And while I think that there are a lot of cooks in this kitchen for the Las Vegas Raiders, there's so many wide receivers around him, but he is going to emerge as that guy. And I think that Henry Ruggs is going very late for no real reason as a burner in the NFL, a guy that you throw in your flex spot, and you just hope this is his game. He's going to have those games where he just wins you the week. He is. He's going to have those games, 20-plus points, where he goes for like 150 yards and two touchdowns because they can't figure out how to stop him. And I would love that for Henry Ruggs. I think Henry Ruggs is a very talented guy, and he landed in a great spot with a quarterback who's pretty confident. I mean, I don't love Derek Carr for the future for the Raiders, but for now, he will be good enough to service Mr. Henry Ruggs the third out of Alabama. So I love him as a sleeper this season. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Let me know some of your guys' wide receivers down below in the comments that you guys think will be sleepers. And make sure you check out the running back video from yesterday. If you want to talk about any player down below, leave it in the comments. I always respond. I love each and every single one of you guys. Please click that subscribe button down below on your screen right now as well, or one of the as well as one of the videos that's on your screen right now, either on top of me, to my left, or to my bottom left. So make sure you guys have a great rest of your day. I love each and every single one of you guys. Goodbye.